Hello, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to the um, 7 September Hyperledger TOC meeting. Um, quick note before we get started. So uh, the TOC chair, Tracy, uh, will take some time today to join. So I'll uh, kickstart the meeting and um, we will let Tracy join in and then I'll hand over to her once she joins in. So uh, before we get started with the meeting, um, I hope I see all the uh, participants on the call. We are all familiar with the antitrust policy. So we are all uh, people joining in from different companies. So we are all expected to behave uh, uh, well in the community. I hope you're all familiar with the other uh, relevant clauses within the um, antitrust policy itself. So I'll move on. All are welcome in the community. So if you have something to say, please uh, raise your hand and um, we will let you speak up. And um, moving on to the agenda items, the announcements uh, for today. There there will be dev weekly newsletter that gets sent to a large number of developer community who's come to Hyperledger website and they subscribe to Hyperledger's um, um, newsletter. And this is really a good forum for um, sharing information across on what's happening within the Hyperledger community because this reaches to a very large number of uh, community members. So if you are a project maintainer or if you are planning to organize an event or if you have something related to project that you want to talk about or any anything in general, even if you have a blog article or a feature that you want to discuss about, all uh, that is needed is go to this link and add a comment saying that this is the information that I want everyone to know about. And that's it. That's how easy it would be. So... Um, so the, uh, I've covered um, this this next item. Sure, right. Um, this is basically a website update. Um, the we the governing board approved this policy on uh, April second, uh, twenty nineteen, and this is uh, just a complete iteration of the approved licenses and when you can and cannot use licenses specific licenses. This has recently uh, become uh, in another context. Uh, it's come up in another context that this wasn't very well documented. Uh, there's another project that uh, wants to use a license and Tracy pointed this out that this was an oversight on our part. So that's all this is saying. This is not, not a change. It's just been added to the website. So to you or unless anyone has questions. Um, um... We're good. So, so I think we discussed about this briefly in one of our previous TOC call as well. Um, um, so eventually we will get this and um, for TOC discussions. So um, one of the thing that um, we could look into is about allowed uh, licenses that I was talking about. We can put up a, a policy through the TOC. Okay. Um, Thanks, Ray, for bringing that up. So was there a question there? Oh, no. Uh, I was about to cover the context for why this was being discussed. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah good. OK, moving on to the uh, agenda, uh, the continuing the agenda items. Uh, we have two quarterly reports that are up for review. Um, Sela was raised about a week ago, and um, uh, sorry, Solang was raised about a week ago, and Sela is raised. It's in rough state. I don't see any um, comments as such for the Solang report, and um, I don't see any reviews happening on the Sela report. And um, yeah, if you have any questions that needs to be discussed from the report, please bring them up. Okay, um, and um, related to the quarterly report itself, I, I don't see anybody uh, raising a concern on that. So um, saw a message from Nico that Hyperledger Fireflies 
um, report is due and that will be uh, the project team is requesting for extension uh, to sign their report for this quarter. Any comments from anybody or any thoughts? This is with respect to Firefly quarterly report. Right, and Nico's question, if he can uh, delay a week, that we would need a vote on that. Um, right, um, I, I, so I know previously, re very recently, even Hyperledger Sawtooth was uh, asking for extension. We, I mean, we could, generally ask the TUC member and we can assume that TUC is okay with it unless somebody raises any questions and concerns. So um, again, one more call, like if you have any concerns or cons uh, comments for the Hyperledger Firefly, please raise it now. Otherwise we will assume we can proceed with assumption that we are okay uh, to extend, give them an extension by one week. If you want anybody to verbalize their agreement, I do. <laughs> I mean, a week is really not much, honestly, so. Mm -hmm. um, that's reassuring, uh, so. Okay, so we will uh, assume um, I mean, we so based on this discussion, we have we will now proceed assuming that Firefly team has been granted one more week to send their report in. So um, moving on, I know Hyperledger transact report was due, and um, I did reach out to the project team and ask them for the extension, uh, um, um, if they want to the project itself to stay, to remain in the dormant state. The other option is uh, the transact project could move into end of life. And as per our um, governance documents, that still allows them to a period of about six months to remain uh, for maintenance. I haven't heard back on that particular comment itself. However, uh, the project team has replied to the previous question that they would like to remain in dormant for six more months. Any concerns or comments on that topic? I think it's fine to leave it dormant for now. Thanks, Anna. It doesn't see. really hurt anything. Thanks, Anna. Uh, Peter? If they don't already have the, some sort of dormancy notification on the README, then I would recommend that they put it on. That's that's the only thing. I'm just I would just be worried that if it's dormant and they're applying or asking to be dormant again, as in continually, then I would be worried that people see the project page and then assume that it's not dormant if there's not a very clear very big bold letter notification on the top of the readme that says so thanks peter um so i can confirm uh, that the transact repository has a readme and that readme has a warning um, text which says the transact project is in dormant state and it references a TOC uh, uh, issue from there. In addition to that, it also says that any new development within Transact now happens within the Sawtooth library. Yeah, that works for me. No other comment or concern. Thanks, Peter. Any other concerns? 
if not um thank you everyone moving on to uh, the discussion items for today uh, we have discussed uh, the update on our security process the policy document that we wanted to put up as part of our governance um so just before start of this meeting i was also uh, trying to discuss if we should uh, how we should proceed with this particular topic so um the the um, argument or the uh, the comment that i had was that we have been discussing about the security process policy and um the recent discussions that have happened on the toc meeting all suggest that everybody have agreed uh, to the policy statement itself and the process that we should adopt however what is pending is uh, how that policy should be presented out uh, to maintainers and in our governance documents so um uh, i understand um uh, steven is occupied but he has agreed to uh, put forward a pr for it and uh, he has also tried it out on how the document would look like within the ad repository um, so i was thinking that if we should vote on the policy or should we still wait for the uh, the the exact text to be put out before we pick it up for voting any thoughts or comments from the toc member yes peter i know it's probably a little too paranoid but as for me i would recommend that we only vote on it once everyone has put in their changes that they want so that the document is finalized so that there is a 0% chance of it happening that a specific sentence or word gets added in the last minute that someone really disagrees with and then they just don't uh, agree with it because of that i know the risk of this is very low but i would prefer it to be zero because it just, it just keeps life simpler thanks peter Dave? Uh, I would also agree. I think we've already kind of verbally agreed on it. So I think we might as well just wait for the final PR and we can just vote in the PR itself or by approving it. Thank you. I see thumbs up from Peter. So I would assume we'll wait for the uh, PRs. So then we'll switch over to the um, next agenda item, which is a task for discussion. So um, this would be uh, the the uh, first uh, meeting within the security artifact uh, signing task force. The goal for this is uh, to discuss about what should be the process that um, we uh, follow across all Hyperledger projects and how do we protect uh, the releases that we uh, produce or of the, the releases that we generate through the Hyperledger Foundation repositories. Uh, so the topic is wider and I'm I'm starting the task force um, like as I, I have a few comments that I can get started with or I have a few pointers that I can share uh, through my screen share and uh, we can then possibly take it up from there if uh, um, everyone is okay with that. Okay. So, um, um, let me open my terminal. I just want to have, so I, I had the, um, um, option to go through the, uh, six stores, which is offered through OpenSSF. So it's, it's a collection of tools and utilities that uh, OpenSSF has that we can adopt within Hyperledger um, ecosystem. I'm, I'm just trying to pull up my uh, notes. That way we can start, I can share that and start discussing the topic. Just give me a moment.
this is it. Right. So um, I hope you can all see my screen. Um, okay. Uh, so I'll briefly cover these aspects. I know um, Arnold and a few other TOC members on the call that are familiar with um, and um, have much more information than maybe what I do. But I'll try to give uh, uh, more information on what we are going to discuss as part of the task force. So um, the problem statement that we are trying to address is to, to sign the releases, the artifacts that we produce from within Hyperledger Foundation repositories. It is uh, required so that um, if I'm a consumer of the project or of a specific artifact that is produced through the Hyperledger Foundation, then I have a means for me to verify that what I'm consuming is the valid artifact that was produced uh, through this process, right? Otherwise, there is risk that um, because the code is open source that somebody can clone and then add some vulnerable um, code uh, or any malicious activity can be performed and a binary can be produced that, that has potential of uh, raising risks. So th that's like a, a very 30,000 feet view of the kind of problem statement that we would try to address through this uh, process. So uh, digging further, specifically talking about uh, six store in particular that uh, if we plan to adopt as part of um, the, the project available from within OpenSSF, the um, project itself or like the ecosystem comes with a set of tools than just one single uh, tool, right? So, um, so, so the, the main objective for us is to have a mechanism or a process where we can sign the artifact and establish a process for people to verify that the signed artifact is indeed what was produced. Now, how do we um, prove these things? In, in, it is possible for us to have our own infrastructure set up and then do it as part of any um, releases that a particular organization would do, a software vendor would do. But is that needed for an open source project or like would there be any other options for us to follow? That's where this exploration goes on, right? So the OpenSSF 6 store has uh, these components. One of that component is called Full Show. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Um, so this is a CA infrastructure that is available, um, um, or probably we can equal. It's an equivalent to a CA infrastructure. The objective of this particular component is to let um, users of this project go there, authenticate themselves, tell who they are, and let the full show generate a temporary uh, um, certificate that is valid for a shorter period of time. And the key associated with that particular certificate can be, then be used uh, to perform the signing operation. Now, what's the advantage of this? Its advantages are in terms of the short-lived certificate that we just discussed, right? And also uh, the infrastructure itself pro provides a mechanism where we do not have to share or store the private key anywhere um, publicly. So typically, if we were to do signing operation without the um, without such an infrastructure, we would go and place our secrets somewhere within, let's say, uh, GitHub secrets, uh, store it there, pull it during the um, the GitHub action phase and perform the signing operation. And, and that leaves us with challenges of how do we manage the key, whom owns it, and the whole the uh, problem statement associated with that, right? So, um, that's the um, that's the advantage that full show brings in. Now the other component that OpenSSF has um, within six store is a component called cosign. Now the cosign it is um, you can consider that to be a client. It they do have a CLI um, 
and they do have SDKs that we can utilize depending on our need and where we want to utilize it. Um, so the cosign has options for us to uh, perform the required um, verification or the signing operations, right? And it does provide us commands to do so on uh, a binary blob, or it could be on a container image itself that we produce. The commands are different, but the concept would remain similar. So that's the uh, gist of what the cosine component is. The other component that rec uh, the six store has is record. Now, what is this and, and why is it important? It's, it's a immutable uh, and transparent append only ledger and uh, not necessarily a blockchain. I know we are all familiar with the blockchain technology. So this is a public ledger or publicly available information. And what it records is every time we perform a, a signing operation, um, it, the, the uh, produced signed information gets recorded on the record. And, and it allows for somebody who wants to verify to go and uh, fetch the relevant information for their verification purposes. Um, so there are some questions that I could not get answered to. I'll bring those up in the later section and we can discuss if others have more information about that. The other component that uh, we will be utilizing is or, or rather an optional component uh, that is available and that will help people who adopt Hyperledger uh, binaries or container images in their development or production environment is this policy controller, right? So it's a, a controller that's available um, through the six stores. And this allows for somebody who is um, downloading container images, which are produced uh, within Hyperledger Foundation to go and verify um, if these images were produced as expected, right? Or from the expected, um, through the, by following the expected process from within the um, open source uh, means that we have done. Now, um, it's, it's always important that we not just sign, but also establish a mechanism for verification as well. Um, signing, sure, we can ask developers and the maintainers to um, adopt a process. However, it is not effective unless uh, the people who are using those artifacts uh, have a means for verifying that, or at least they are aware of what they should be doing in order to verify uh, these signatures. So that's where this comes in handy. And some of our projects within Hyperledger Foundation, we can recommend those projects uh, especially which deals with the deployment um, related things and the projects which do have helm charts to see if they can adopt this uh, um, component into their um, projects, right? That's the, uh, I would still treat that as an optional component, but it is important that we document that component. So that's the gist of what is available through the six stores. And, um, in terms of advantages, I guess we discussed that we are not going to store any sensitive information and there's uh, no potential risk of leaking it. Um, and, and we can shorten the duration of those generated artifacts. Uh, the, the key, uh, the validity of the certificate, we can even shorten that on demand. And in terms of authentication, um, now, now in terms of adopting this within Hyperledger, um, build processes right? or maybe GitHub actions that we have. What all thanks do we have? It is possible for us to utilize uh, the GitHub based authentication um, in, and, and uh, the full show provides that YDC um, connection which can utilize GitHub's authentication. It does have other uh, authentication means as well. And the um, so, so I see a risk in terms of, um, how we handle that GitHub identity uh, with the authentication. I was trying to automate, uh, when I was doing a hands-on and understanding the six store, 
I, I see a risk there or um, when, when I say risk, it is with respect to should the project teams be allowed to manage this or should it be through uh, the community architects within the Hyperledger Foundation, right? So that's one uh, risk that I saw. Now continuing the other things that um, that may be of um, importance for us to discuss here is with respect to verification, right? And I know I said record is a public record, uh, which captures all the um, information that we can later audit. Now, um, just this, this thinking through what information would somebody need in order for them to verify um, the the um, the information which is present on record or like verify their artifact against the information present in records. So um, this has, this led me, this particular question led me to two parts. One was with respect to container image itself. The other part was um, with respect to like blob uh, artifacts that we produce. Now uh, with respect to container image itself, I found that uh, during my experiment, that um, the, the signed uh, manifest that we produce, it also captures information relevant for verification along with the container image, right? And um, it is possible for us to establish a, a means for verifying that. However, when it comes to like, any other um, artifacts or blob that we produce. If we perform a signature using cosine, um, I did not find uh, effective means for us to store that information, um, um, right? We need to look for storing that uh, information. And this information includes the long log index that, it, that we need for verification and the signature text that we need for verification the ephemeral certificate, uh, the uh, OIDs information that was used during the sign operation. Uh, so OpenSSF 6 store does define a way to capture all of this or bundle all of this into common structure that we can store somewhere. But I did not find the effective means. I may be again wrong, like if others are familiar, please do uh, share that information. I did not find a mechanism to store this information for blob artifacts. And um, the other uh, thing that I observed was the attestation that we do, um, the, the common structure that I was talking about that captures all of this, can we at maximum have a size of 100 KB? So that's the um, summary of all the exploration that I was able to perform. Uh, prior to this meeting. I can show these commands through a terminal, but um, before that, I'll probably pause and open up for comments and or any thoughts or questions. Hey, um, oops, sorry, I need to read. I'm sorry, I, I'm sharing the screen, so it's difficult for me to see what's happening. I, I assume, Peter, you raised your hand first. Um, hello? Yeah, I can hear you, and I think just no one else has spoken up yet. Okay, um, hey, Peter. Peter, you're on mute if you're talking. Clear. Peter, the floor is yours. Yeah. Maybe connection issues, Peter, we can't hear you. Yeah, let's... Jim, since your hands up, let's let Peter sort out his uh, audio uh, things. I have all my soul. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, it's 
pretty noisy um, and your audio is pretty choppy. So Peter, we'll come back. Um, we'll go with Jim and we'll come back to you uh, in a while. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> thanks, Aaron. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm not fully familiar with this suite of, of tools here. Uh, I guess my first question is uh, that short-lived certificate for code signing, um, is it a uh, prevalent practice for, for using short-lived certificates? I would imagine during verification, this would be a problem if your codes, you know, uh, the signature on your, um, on your signed package is against a expired certificate? Um, so the short-lived certificate concept, uh, that's the uniqueness that we gain uh, when we follow the six store project. Now the um, information, need, uh, I mean, the verification purposes, right? So we would need that short-lived certificate and we would need to know that uh, that was the corresponding certificate uh, that the signing key was associated with at the verification time. And I understand like it gets expired because it's a short lived. So the public record that we have in through the record, that's the uh, proof that we have uh, to verify that this was a short lived certificate that existed back um, when it was produced and it was signed. Um, so there is one publicly hosted instance of record. There is also a possibility for somebody to host this um, outside of that public instance. So these are available both for deployment and, and running instance of record. So just to uh, validate my understanding, uh, if, if a customer uh, needs to validate a uh, signed, binary or a Docker image, they first need to look at the certificate to verify the signature, and then they have to query the, the ledger uh, to make sure it's properly registered there. It's at least a two-step thing, right? And they have to, they have to build a custom uh, code in their pipeline. I assume most of them just look at uh, the signature against the certificate on the binary itself, but now they have to to make specific enhancements in their pipeline to make queries to this ledger. Um, so, I mean, that's right. These tools that um, I spoke about, like the cosign tool, does have the capabilities for verification built into it. So if um, I, and the controller that I spoke about, policy controller that is available, that also has an option for uh, verification inbuilt within it. So uh, the, in terms of okay. adoption, that would be utilizing these tools uh, that we need to uh, look into into our pipelines. Okay, I, I'm trying to pull up the sorry, go on. Yeah, I guess the last question, hopefully a quick one, is uh, six door a sort of a uh, a standard or or popular toolkit? How is it adopted currently? I am unaware of the adoption aspect, um, but it it is getting popular as I speak. Um, if it is hard, I think you're the right person. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Jim, it's popular and becoming more popular. Like the CNCF uses Sigstore, for instance. Uh, several other large Linux Foundation projects uh, use Sigstore. Um, artifact signing is rapidly becoming a security requirement, uh, and Sigstore seems to be the choice for open source projects. Thanks, Hart. That helps. Sorry, I uh, couldn't find my mute button. Um, this is six door is uh, becoming more widely adopted within LF. I mean, that's the plan of record for LF. 
um, single, it's not a mandate, but more and more LF projects are, are depending on it. Anyway, Marcus, I see your hands up. Uh, yeah, thank you. So one question, I mean, as, as, as you say, right, that, I mean, Hyperledger is using Sixto, but are those uh, Linux Foundation projects then using this public instance of Sixto or in particular ReCore uh, as a backend? And I believe um, this instance is provided by, by Google at the moment. And I mean, I, I find the six low project pretty sexy, I must uh, admit, e e despite the fact that, yeah, it uh, it applies ledger technology, which is uh, not distributed in terms of trust. Um, so, yeah, right. Um, I just wanted to say like, it is hosted publicly and it is uh, through the sponsorship of different companies may not be of a single company, right? Do you want to add to that? Um, no, that's fine. Um, it's, if you go, if you go to sigstore.dev, um, there's a lot more information there. But would it make sense that uh, the Linux Foundation also runs uh, a Recore uh, service then? I'm just guessing here. I can't answer that off the top of my head. I will have to dig into it to find out what stores uh, other the LF is pushing towards. So I can't answer your question. Maybe hard, or I know have more insights. I don't know. Uh, well, I would say it makes sense, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will happen. <laughs> okay. Um, so Marcus, maybe we'll take that as an open question that we can check back and come back in the later calls. Thanks for that. Uh, Peter, I see you next. Can you hear me now? Is this better? Uh, better than So I'm looking into this. We mm. lost you again, Peter. Because I wanted to self host or not. Oh, no. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Hello. We we could, uh, but you broke when you were talking about uh, something that you wanted to say. Yes, public instance. I was researching it last night, and uh, I found that there's five people on their list who have root signing keys. It's uh, like a committee of key holders, and I don't know any of them personally, so I wanted just to ask. Anyone actually knows any of these people? Here's the link. I'll put it on the Discord. Because if we can trust, if we, if anyone here knows any of those people personally, then I wouldn't mind trusting them. Otherwise, maybe it makes sense to self-host our own. That was uh, my initial take based on the. Uh, last night's research can you still hear me we, we could and we understood your question peter okay. okay thanks for that um we will wait for your link i i remember there was a link um in the six store where i put it on discord perfect thank you no problem and i tried to share the screen, but it won't let me. Oh, sure, go on. Uh, Peter, where did you put this in Discord? The September 6th, 2023 meeting, uh, TLC. Now, we still don't see that, Peter. Maybe it's the connectivity issue. 
Yeah, and if you can, you can try, try to share your screen. Share I don't know if it happens well. Can you see the screen? We do. Okay, so these are the rules for Republicans from what I could gather. And ideally, for an instance that we use, I prefer to know at least one of the people on the list, personally, because otherwise, for all I know, these people could be completely fictional. So I can Maybe tell you, I, I know the, yeah. I know personally the first three people on that list. They are not fictional. They are oh, real people. <laughs> awesome. Okay, there that's good enough for me. So then, based on that, I think we could use the public instance that's available. So one thing I wanted to add is, I mean, um, all, there has been discussions because Sixtor is part of OpenSSF and there's been discussions about whether OpenSSF should take over the running of the instance that they've been maintaining. I think Marcus is right. It's funded by Google today. Uh, I don't know if it will happen or not. Uh, there is this, there's no active discussion on that point that I know of, but uh, it has been brought up before. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is, you know, the way to think of Six Store, this is kind of their one liner, is the motivation for Six Store in the first place was in a way that's similar to Let's Encrypt, which allowed to anybody to, 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 to have keys so that they could use HTTPS and make HTTPS prevalent. Um, they said, we wanted to make a system that allowed signing artifacts in a similar way, cheaply, I mean, freely really, and, and simply. So that's kind of where they come from. Thanks, Anna. Uh, I assume that's what you also wanted to call out. Um, yep. Hi, Dave. Hi. So I just didn't understand who was actually doing the signing. Which identity is it? Is it the identity of Hyperledger or a specific project or a specific maintainer on a project? Do we know that yet? I can show, um, I can share my screen again if I could. Um, well, the answer is anybody can do it, right? So you can, you can. I mean, the release manager could do it. That would be the obvious person to do it. When you mm -hmm. you producing new images, in our case, usually they're container images, and you you publish them to the registry, you can sign them, and and the metadata associated with the container image on the registry they can be the envelope information so that they can find the pointer to the record in the in the record instance to verify the certificate and signature. So Arnold, uh, whoever signs up on the website to create an account can get issued a certificate? Yeah, there's anybody no, can do that. There's no uh, code unquote KYC. Open ID, no. There isn't, but with OpenID Connect, I mean, you they rely on the web, on the email address, really, right? Okay. OpenID. Okay, and, and so would the registered name be like my own name or would it be Hyperledger? I, I think Arnold uh, captured the gist, right? So this is something that we should discuss within TOC on how we should adopt if we plan to adopt this. I'm uh, sharing a screen to um, to uh, visualize how that would look like, for instance, right? So as I'm not said, as long as anybody have a means to authenticate themselves with the um, full show through OIDC, they can sign any artifact that they produce. And we all we need to do is probably just um, import this co-sign into our pipeline. 
and add the sign command instead of, uh, I know I'm showing the verify here, but uh, that would be like sign command and then use this identity and I authenticate with this uh, full show and I sign it, right? So th now the record has the log entry. For somebody who wants to verify, they would need to supply uh, the identity which they trust and the signature that they're planning to verify with the OIDC um, uh, issuers that they uh, want to verify this identity against. So if we were to adopt in, in order to answer that question of who owns that identity and then should it be maintainer of a project or the Hyperledger Foundation, um, we could discuss that if, if we need to put policy around it. It is possible for us to um, have, for instance, right, um, like Hyperledger wide identity that we use for all the artifacts um, and let the staff maintain it. I don't know, I'm just um, calling out random things here, right? If that's an, um, uh, if they, that's a responsibility that the staff can pick it up and they maintain the identity and they can provide that means for different project teams in their pipelines uh, to perform the signing. And then through Hyperledger, we can say, if hey, if you want to verify any artifact that is produced outside uh, out of our repositories, here is a means for you to verify. Sorry, um, would that answer your question? Um, so the, the gist is like, we need to come up with a policy if we want to. Could we use the Hyperledger bot uh, account that exists to do these signatures? Um, or some similar yeah. sort of account that would basically be a Hyperledger GitHub organization-wide um, key that we, we store and then the GitHub Actions could use that? Yes. Um... I mean, Hyperledger bot already owns a bunch of the publication stuff. So the answer is, I mean, could it be done? Yes. Do I think it should be done? Uh, probably. Um, I don't think there's any more, since that account is already publishing a bunch of our artifacts, um, I don't think there's any additional risk from having those artifacts signed by that account. But everyone on the call is uh, free to disagree. Thanks, right. Thanks, Tracy. Peter? I agree that it would be... Wait, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. I agree that it would be much more convenient for me for as well if it was uh, a staff-maintained key and identity and the bot did it all. But at the same time, uh, I will say that maybe that's a good first step, but we could also, after that, step-by-step step work on the solution where individual maintainers can or has to have to also sign so that if there is a malicious uh, binary out there for whatever reason, probably a key compromise, then we can tell whose identity was stolen and compromised and used to do a malicious sign. Uh, but uh, that's just, uh, that's, uh, that's the least convenient way of doing it. And so I agree that just to take one step at a time, we could probably just get going with the common staff maintained keys and identities. So, I, I have not looked into this at all, um, but I imagine it would be fairly trivial to have, uh, much like we have per repo secrets, I imagine it would be fairly easy to have per repo or per project keys. Um, so if one of them was compromised, it wouldn't compromise the entire stack. Um, I don't know the answer to that, so I'm just going to imagine that that's true, and I, I promise you I will look into it. Thanks, right? I have comments, but I'll go with hard first. Yeah. yeah, that should definitely be possible. And we would want to do per project keys anyway, right? 
I, I think so per project or, or perhaps even per repo. Yeah, um, even per sub project. I mean, we, we could let the pro my, uh, my thought on this was that we let the projects decide how exactly they want to structure their own. Um, because obviously like Aries is going to work a little differently than fabric. Thanks, Art. Um, yeah, Tracy. Well, we do need some sort of consistency for people who are using hyperledger packages to be able to verify them, correct? Agree. Um, I had comments on that, but I'll go with Marcus. Yeah, so I was wondering, I mean, why can't we just, uh, I mean, do this as the Hyperledger Foundation to host by ourselves. I mean, we could, for instance, have a repository where we basically publish the public key, uh, public uh, signing keys for each individual project, and then, I mean, just sign our artifacts and uh, basically tell the people, hey, in order to validate this artifact, go to this official Hyperledger repository on GitHub and uh, use the information to validate um, the the artifact you don't just downloaded. So um, in broad strokes, I agree. Um, one difficulty there, one difficulty there is um, ownership, of, when I say ownership, I mean, uh, GitHub, people in GitHub that have the owner role is a fluid set of people um, because all LFIT staff can self-assign themselves, can assign themselves ownership of any repo. Um, we could have another, we can talk through that, but the, the list of people who have the ability to do stuff, uh, two repos uh, owned by Hyperledger uh, is unknown. And all we can do if something happens is look at the audit log uh, and see who did it. So I, uh, you know, that's the only downside to that I can think of, uh, Marcus. But I'm also not sure if this is a better idea, to, uh, I mean, a better approach uh, in contrast to Sixto, but I'm just trying to put this here on the table and discuss if this is, uh, uh, let's say, not a good homegrown alternative. Um, I mean, and, and the, the point you raised that maybe, I mean, Hyperledger stuff would be able to manipulate uh, the the data or the, the GitHub um, history of that uh, repository. Well, I mean, if there's a way to audit this, that's fine. I mean, the same thing you would do then with Recore anyway, right? Well, I, I'm talking on the org level, not the repo level. Um, so let me... Share my screen here quickly. Uh, so right now, uh, here is the audit log. So this is something that unless, I think you would have to delete the org uh, to clean or edit the audit log. Uh, so this is the, the organization audit log. When it comes to who can do what to a repo, um that's the, the the you know that's the part that i was on about uh if we look at so this is the current list of people that are org owners um so you know it's it this is a fluid list you know when it comes to the the audit log this is you know, less fluid. This is something that GitHub, uh, you know, controls. But I guess the same issue we would have if Hyperledger would run their own six store instance, right? So someone, some Hyperledger staff will get access to this instance and control it through some way. I don't know, I guess. Sure. So I, I guess the, the question there is, do we, the, the Hyperledger maintainer, project maintainers, uh, 
trust the immutability of the public SIG store that's being run, uh, you know, by the other team, you know, we, do we trust that more or less than the immutability of our own SIG store? Thanks, right. Thanks, Marcus. Um, I don't know. So I wanted to say a couple of things. First, I mean, following up to Marcus, you know, point about well, we could just sign publish public keys. Yes, we could. I mean, this is the way we used to do that 20 years ago. I remember when we were publishing releases of some Apache software I was working on. And it was just like, yeah, you put the tar file on the on your on your server with a signature attached to it and that's it but i mean one of the motivations of the store was that is the observation that this is often done poorly it uh, forces people to deal with public keys and and certificates that they typically don't do very well long term and one of the advantages of six store is that with this mechanism of the, the transparency log uh, record, you know, you only need uh, short-lived certificates that is produced by Fultio on demand. And so you don't have to keep the certificate around for a long time and it reduces the exposure and the problems with people losing keys and whatnot. And so they just record you know, they record uh, an entry in the in the transparency log and you go back to this and that's your proof point. But yes, you could do it differently. There's no doubt. Uh, the cosine, if you, if you, you know, I encourage you to play around a little bit with it. I haven't done that in over a year now, but uh, my experience has been that, you know, it's well designed in terms of making it super easy to use so that the basic operations of publishing, signing things is very easy. So that's the advantage. It, it, they really looked at the pain points of the traditional way of publishing, you know, uh, signed artifacts and say, oh, how can we modernize this to make it super easy and more bulletproof? Thank you. But I guess we could also, I mean, uh, think about a hybrid model, right? I mean, we could still use cosine for all the stuff. Um, but I mean, but instead of uh, using their ledger technology, I mean, we just use something which we already own, like a GitHub repository. I don't yeah, know. yeah, we could. I, 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 I have to say, I'm a bit surprised by the general worry there that I'm sensing about. We cannot trust this system, <laughs> you know. I, maybe we're. I mean, today we're not doing any of this, and uh, exactly. and all of all of a sudden we're saying, oh wait, we're going to rely on something that's maintained by some other party we don't really know. I don't know if we can do that. I, it might be a bit extreme. I don't know. No, I agree. I mean, I think we should definitely do this uh, instead of doing nothing. That's uh, that, that's true. Um, I mean, if down the line we feel like, okay, this is not a trustable system, we need to adopt our own instance, you know, uh, so be it. But I think for now, we shouldn't burden ourselves with that, honestly. Yeah. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Anwar. I did have comments, but I see it's already 10-1. Um, it's... So we are we we are at the summit of this meeting. Unless if anybody has any other questions, we will continue these discussions in our upcoming um, task force meetings. Perfect. Thank you, everyone.